So today we need to go back and look at the Alabama Crimson Tide 21 class because the summer enrollees are beginning to find their way on campus. And there are a lot of guys that are going to be making their way to campus this weekend that I think could be pushing for playing time come fall. And we need to get into it. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. So hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe that some of these summer enrollees will be pushing for playing time come fall? And if you do, let me know which ones. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I do constant college football content and you don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy that content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions are massive for content creators such as myself. But with all that being said and out the way, when we're talking about the summer enrollees, there might not be a better place to start as far as recruiting goes, and then we'll get to the transfers later, than Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner comes from a high school that is just regarded as being a factory and getting kids ready for the next level. So when he wasn't an early enrollee, I wasn't worried about it because in between his trainers and then the high school he plays for, he's going to be just fine. And then he has the athletic capability and depth to do a lot of different things. Look, when we're talking Dallas Turner, 6'4", 245 pounds, rated as the number one weak side defensive end in the nation per 24-7 sports, but the Crimson Tide look to feature him at the outside linebacker position, a position group that is already stacked loaded. I mean, if we're just looking the past two years at five stars they've pulled, you're talking Drew Sanders, you're talking Chris Braswell, now you add in Dallas Turner, oh yeah, and you know, the guy we're all the most familiar with, Will Anderson Jr. So for the Crimson Tide coaching staff to look at Dallas Turner, seeing that how proficient he is at weak side defensive end, and then say, we think we can maximize you at the outside linebacker position, that should just give all Tide fans a glimmer of hope at the type of talent they see in this kid. This is a kid we're going to have to bookmark. I'm, I'm really excited to see and hear how he does in the fall when everything starts heating up then, because this is a name that is really intriguing, and there's a lot of guys that could be pushing for playing time, but this kid right here has so much depth and versatility to his athleticism that he's a name we're going to be checking back on when it comes to the fall, and I think he's a name that most Tide fans are incredibly excited about. Look, the simple way to put this is the Crimson Tide signed four guys last cycle that 24-7 Sports had rated at a 9-9 or higher, and Dallas Turner was one of them, and his athletic capability is absolutely deserving, so we're going to be ex incredibly excited about him. But he wasn't the only five-star that will be joining the Crimson Tide along the defensive front, because Damon Payne will also be making his way to Tuscaloosa, and this is an individual who I have been saying I could see featured along this defensive front rotation for the Crimson Tide this next season. Look, we all know how the Crimson Tide like to run their defense. The more athletic bodies they can throw at you, the better. And now when you add in a five-star with the type of suddenness and decisiveness in his first few steps and hand fighting that Damon Payne possesses, sky's the limit. When he gets in here, starts working with Roach, starts working with the defense as a whole, I think this kid's going to catch on very quickly, and if he does, if he does catch on very quickly, and if his skill set begins to translate sooner rather than later, I think his skill set's too good to keep off the field, because he's someone who could be generating pressure from the interior, and we've talked about this before. The ability to ge generate pressure from the interior, specifically on Alabama, when on the exterior, you have Will Anderson and Chris Allen bearing down on the quarterback. Oh, it's just a recipe for disaster. And Damon Payne is someone who in year one, I think will be a rotation player. I'm not saying it will be easy, but he has the athletic capability to at least crack the rotation. At what level, I'm not sure. But I think we could see him at multiple different points this season, adding in some very needed depth. And I think he's somebody that opposing offenses will be dreading seeing a part of that depth at some point this season. Another name we're going to be looking back on. The next person is someone I'm very excited for, but what a room to step into, and that is five-star Kamar Wheaton. Five-star Kamar Wheaton, right out of Texas, right out of my backyard, this individual has it all, and he's your prototypical Texas running back. When we think of the Texas running back, they really don't have a weakness. They're usually very physical, very fast, good cutting ability, but they don't have to cut. They will straight up run you over and keep going, and he has anything you could want. I think the most intriguing thing about Wheaton is he's been comped to Dalvin Cook, and as a sophomore, he was clocked at a 10.69 and then a 10.62 100-meter dash as a sophomore. He stands at 5'10", about 210 pounds. Solid individual, and it's been rumored that he hit a 4.32 
in high school. This kid right here is next level. Let me tell you, he took over Texas high school, specifically North Texas high school football, by storm. His name was known to everybody who was into high school football in this area because he was that good. He has all the upside in the world. He's somebody who, even though this is an incredibly, incredibly loaded room, I could see him being featured in maybe a very small capacity because you're already looking at him being the third five-star running back in that room. Jace McClellan was officially a four-star. I give him the five-star nod because he was a five-star, the number two running back in his class the entirety of his high school career up until his injury, and we've all seen him. He's got five-star ability. That room is loaded. Whether Kamar Wheaton can play or not, it's not going to be decided based on his ability. He has the ability to play. That room is so unbelievably loaded, it's going to be very hard to crack the rotation, but I wouldn't be shocked. He has that ability. He has that suddenness and that burst, and that could be a very big tool for the Crimson Tide, especially if he's in here running four threes. But the five stars are not done yet because five star, Terry on Arnold, is also making his way to Tuscaloosa the defensive back. Now, the, this is a really interesting one for me because we're going to talk more about the really interesting position the Crimson Tide are in with defensive back when we get to Kyrie Jackson, but the inside linebacker and defensive back position are very unique to me for the Crimson Tide because they mirror each other. Last year around this time, I thought that the Crimson Tide were in a position where they really had to focus on defensive back and recruiting, and then along came Malachi Moore and Brian Branch, developed into incredible players, right? Incredibly talented players. You have Malachi Moore as being listed as a top five defensive back to watch by Pro Football Focus at the safety position, and when he went down, Brian Branch came in there, and there was not a steep fall off. I mean, those are two guys that I truly do believe can play at an All-American level. I really do believe that. So when you have that happen, you create a situation to where you had answers, and then you created a situation where those answers turned into an abundance of answers. And that's a great problem to have. Adding in Terry on Arnold is only going to further that. He is a physical defensive back. He can play corner. He can play safety. He's someone who could be seen in the rotation, whether it's year one, I'm not sure. I think right now the Alabama Crimson Tide defensive backfield is so loaded, and Jaquincy McKinstry really gets the benefit of having came in there during the spring and getting those early reps, getting those early coaching, and then getting to take that into the summer, where he's kind of had an understanding of what's expected of him, what's expected out of the defense. He can sit on it, he can learn from it, and he can train based off of that. That's going to be a big thing, and he's already so talented, McKinstry is. But I can tell you this, sooner rather than later, we will be seeing Terry on Arnold because he's too good to keep off the field. So that is going to be a name we look back on. JoJo Earl is an individual who I have been bullish on. You guys know this. I think that he is going to come in there and be great. He's going to solve a lot of the issues the staff had with not having speed. Now, the staff identified that, put Keelian Robinson out of the outside at wide receiver for some reps apparently in the spring, then went out and got Jamison Williams. We're going to talk about that here in a bit. But JoJo Earl has a uncanny ability and rare twitchiness. I know we talk a lot about some guys having elite twitchiness. He has rare twitchiness, and I promise you that. Go watch his high school tape. He has rare twitchiness. He looks to be looking to contribute at the wide receiver H position fairly early. He's got very good route running for being in high school, and I think that he can improve upon that this summer because I absolutely think he has the ability. I think he's going to be featured at wide receiver H some this year. I think he's going to add into an already potent Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiver room who on paper is very talented, doesn't have the experience, but I think halfway through the year we're going to be talking about this Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiver room up there with the best of them. A big reason is going to be him. Kadarius Calloway, number four athlete in the nation, he's got the kind of tape that makes you raise your eyebrows in the best way possible. He could play either way. He could play offense. He could play defense. I think he'll likely play defense. He's somebody who, once again, going into that defensive backfield, it's incredibly loaded, going to be very hard to crack that rotation. But if he doesn't crack it this year, he's going to be learning from a lot of good guys. And he's someone who he 
and Kane Williams, if they aren't able to crack this rotation year one, I absolutely think there's still going to be names that we know due to their ability to go in and contribute on special teams. And that's not a slight. We know how Nick Saban is with his special teams. If you're playing special teams for Alabama, it's because you are very athletic. He doesn't just put guys who can't get it done out there. And usually those are the names that we end up seeing on offense, on defense, making plays further down in their career. I expect both that from Kadarius Calloway and Kane Williams because I think their abilities are very intriguing, the both of them, but they come into rooms that are so loaded with talent, but that special team's ability, they're going to be too good to keep off the field. Kendrick Blackshire is one of the most well-known recruits the Crimson Tide pulled despite not being a five-star. He's probably one of, if not the most physically imposing recruits in the nation. He looked like a grown man as a sophomore in high school, and I can't imagine how many times they had to check his birth certificate. He's somebody who, we talked about how I viewed the inside linebacker room very akin to how I view the DB room, and it's for this reason right here. When Dylan Moses enters the NFL draft, the Crimson Tide are in a position where they have Christian Harris, but they don't know who else. We think Jalen Moody, then you get Deontay Lawson. We think Jalen Moody's going to be just fine. We saw him in the Arkansas game. He was really, really good. But then we see him in A-Day, and it only continues, and he looked better. So then all of a sudden, a Crimson Tide fan is sitting there thinking, okay, Christian Harris, Jalen Moody, that's going to be just fine. And then Deontay Lawson shows himself. And you're thinking, oh, geez, now we have great depth. And then Henry Toe Toe comes in. And now you have a situation to where you had questions, and now you have an abundance of answers. Kendrick Blackshire walks into a perfect situation. He has no pressure to play year one. He had some injuries in high school. He can have a year with, I believe, one of the best strength and conditioning programs in the nation. These two new guys, Bama got, are phenomenal. They can get him right. They can get him completely healthy, and he can learn from some very, very good veteran players in Toe Toe and Christian Harris, and this could be a guy we see featured as a future Alabama Crimson Tide middle linebacker because he is an absolute beast when you watch him play football. It's awesome to watch. You know, when we're talking about the Alabama Crimson Tide recruiting class last year, you cannot understate the offensive line. And we've talked about it a lot on this channel, signing the number one tackle in the nation, the number two tackle in the nation, heck, signing two of the top five players in the nation who both happen to be tackles. You don't see that all all the time, and Alabama got the greatest offensive line recruiting class of all time last cycle, and Jaden Roberts was a guy who absolutely helped contribute that, the four-star guard out of North Shore. Now, there's a few things I like about this. One, I think think he's deceptively athletic. He has a better ability to pull and reach that second level than I think most people realize. And I think that he's a guy who could actually come in here and turn heads quicker than most people realize. North Shore is very true in what they're able to do on the offensive line. Just look at Damian George a few years back coming in as a three-star prospect. And, you know, when he got there, they thought he was raw, but he's came along very well because he was just young in his actual career of football, if you will. Jaden Roberts is another guy I think could come in here and turn heads, and the fact that he's from North Shore I love even more because of Denver Harris is from North Shore. You have to love that. And now we're into the final stretch, and there are two guys coming to Alabama this year that I think are really going to benefit from a few different things, and that's Tim Keenan and Ann Quinn Barnes. Now, I don't think either of them have a real huge shot at seeing the field this year, but it's not because of their ability. It's because both of them have a situation where I actually think in Tim Keenan's case, he's going to be trying to rehab an injury. Once again, I think that the Crimson Tide have the best strength and conditioning program in the nation. I'm a little biased there, but I certainly would not think many fans would argue with me when I put those two at a top five. I think that that would be pretty widely accepted. They're going to get him right. They both get to learn from very, very talented veteran players before them. A LeBron Ray, someone who's going to be showing out this season and then going on to the NFL draft next season. They're both going to be coming in here looking to learn a ton from the experience Alabama has while getting right. Not only healthy in Tim Keenan, but Anquin Barnes' upside is unbelievable. He's going to come in there, get cut up, get in this Alabama conditioning program, and he's going to be a force. Look, both of these guys are three-star prospects, but if you watch their tape, neither of them play like three stars. They should have been, in my opinion, high four stars, but there are so many talented kids in the nation every year. This is bound to happen. These are two kids we need to watch. 
Kyrie Jackson is an interesting prospect because he stands at six foot four and he's a DB, but he doesn't play DB like a six foot four DB would. He doesn't have that inability to have rangy motion, the ability to cut on a dime, and he comes up and lays the wood. But once again, the same thing I said with Terry on Arnold. Are you going to be able to get playing time in this absolutely smack loaded Alabama Crimson Tide secondary? You know, Kyrie Jackson is an individual who people do believe could come in and vie for playing time. If he does or not, I wouldn't be surprised because he has the ability. And when you watch him play corner, my goodness, he's loving just taking people's heads off. But once again, you have a very talented group right now at the Alabama Crimson Tide in that defensive back room. And Jaquincy McKinstry, we all knew was going to be good, but he was really good in the spring. And that's only going to keep getting better Can Kyrie Jackson crack the lineup? That remains to be seen, but he is a guy who could be adding a ton of depth because he's got a lot of ability. Devontae Smith, another DB coming in here. He's probably going to take the year, get coached up, but his upside is really, really nuts. And you actually saw the latter half of his cycle when he was in the recruiting process, he was soaring up the boards, deservedly so. The Crimson Tide also features three transfers before we wind this down in Henry To'o To'o, Jamison Williams, and then Jack Martin. We've already talked about two of the three. We're just going to lightly go through them again. Henry To'o To'o ranked as the number one transfer in the nation per 24-7 sports. Freshman All-American last year only backed it up with another great year for a pretty porous Tennessee team, if I'm being honest. And he's absolutely deserving of the number one transfer spot in the nation. Now, that inside linebacker position is not going to be given to him because as we talked about earlier when we were talking about Kendrick Blackshire, that position was a position that had questions, but now there's an abundance of answers. Albeit To'o To'o being part of that abundance of answers, but the abundance of answers are there nonetheless. He's going to have to come in there and compete with Lawson, with Moody, but he has the ability to win the job. So does Moody, so does Lawson. That's going to be a battle that makes everybody better, but the Crimson Tide defense is better because of To'o To'o, and he will be seeing the field. Jamison Williams is someone who the Crimson Tide staff kept talking about speed. They wanted speed. They went out and got speed. Verified 4-4 on every day of the week, twice on Sunday, and 4-3 on a really good day. This guy right here has burner ability, and he's been adamant about really trying to work on his route running ability, and I think that he's going to come to the Crimson Tide and find himself. Sometimes talented players just get in a situation where they get buried, and it's kind of like trying to climb out of a hole that never ends, and you lose a little bit of that spark. Sometimes a change of scenery is necessary, and that's what I'm thinking is going to be the case with Jamison Williams. And finally, the last name we're going to be talking about, Jack Martin. Alabama has a punter. Alabama has a punter that rivals J.K. Scott in his average. And if you think about this Alabama defense going into this year and the potential they could have, the ability to be able to pin offenses back deep and then let this pass rush eat up opposing quarterbacks, you got to love it, right? And if the Alabama offense can come along, this right here, having a punter that rivals J.K. Scott, you always take that. Always. That's going to be awesome. The Crimson Tide have a lot of guys coming in over the summer that I think we can kind of forget about because when we look at the hall in its entirety, it's so impressive. And the early enrollees were already so impressive that we can kind of forget how talented some of these summer guys are. But there are a few guys that could be seeing the field early. Now, I want to hear from y'all. Do you believe that there will be some summer enrollees that are seeing the field in the fall? Let me know who if you believe that there will be. And that's it. See you.